In this lesson, you will learn to use spell check features available in Case Catalyst. By default, spell check is set to display a red squiggle under any words that spell check does not recognize. If the spelling is correct, you can quickly add the spelling to a word list so that spell check will recognize it. If the word is misspelled, you can type the correct spelling or use a spelling lookup feature to determine and then insert the correct spelling. For example, Spellcheck doesn't recognize this spelling of the name Rebecca. Therefore, I can add it to a word list so that Spellcheck will recognize this spelling. With the cursor positioned on the word that I want Case Catalyst Spellcheck to recognize, I can access the Add to Word List command either by clicking the Tools menu or by right-clicking and selecting Add to Word List. There are a number of word lists to choose from. The one you select will determine whether Case Catalyst should recognize the spelling as correct for one job only, all jobs in a case, or all jobs in every case. Although this is currently the only job in this case, it's certainly possible that I'll take more jobs where this would be the correct spelling, so I'll go ahead and add it to the case word list. Great! I've eliminated the red squiggle from all occurrences of Rebecca in the job. Next, you can see there's a red squiggle under the word potentially. The red squiggle indicates that the word potentially is misspelled. Whenever you come across words that appear to be spelled incorrectly and you're not sure what the correct spelling should be, you can look it up. With the cursor positioned on the word I want to look up, I can either click Tools, Spelling Lookup, or use the shortcut key, Control plus F7, or I can click the Spelling Lookup button on the toolbar. Here, I can see the word that I'm looking up and the steno associated with that word. Spelling Lookup automatically lists suggestions for possible replacements for the word I'm looking up. If none of the suggestions looks correct, you can type the phonetic equivalent of the word you're looking for in the Change To field, then click the Suggest button and different spellings will be suggested. If you like the suggestion, and I like the first suggestion here for the correct spelling for potentially, with two L's instead of one, you then have a choice of how to change the text in the transcript to the suggestion made by spelling lookup. If I click Change, it will be changed in this one spot only. If I click Global, I can open a Global Define dialog box and then D-Define, K-Define, J-Define, or E-Define all occurrences. I would prefer for this steno to be defined with the correct steno, so I'll select Global. Catalyst defaults to a dedefine, but if I wanted to change this to another type of define, I could click Global Type and change the selection. However, potentially is a word that could come up in any job, so dedefine is the best choice. I'll just go ahead and click OK. Adding items to a word list or looking up spellings as you edit are two ways to use spell check features. Another method is to use the spell check transcript function to check all spellings, spacing, and other items throughout the entire transcript. To spell check the entire transcript, you can click Tools, Spell Check, or press the shortcut key Shift plus F7, or you can click the spell check transcript button on the toolbar. Spellcheck has discovered a repeated word. There are a couple of ways to deal with repeated words. If it's correct and doesn't need to be edited, you can press Enter or click Ignore. If all occurrences of it, it are correct and you want to tell Spellcheck not to stop on it again during this Spellcheck session in Edit, you can click Ignore All. If all occurrences of it, it are correct every time you Spellcheck this job, or every job in this case, or every job in your user, and you want to tell Spellcheck not to stop on it, it again, you can add the phrase it, it to the job, case, or personal word lists. If the second occurrence of the word doesn't need to be there, you can click Delete. The context of this sentence makes it appear that what should have been written here was it is, not it, it. To fix that, I can type the word is in the Change To field, and then click Change. The previous item was fixed immediately, and Spellcheck moves on to the next item it thinks you should check. Whenever Spellcheck sees more than one punctuation symbol, it will stop. If it's improper, 
such as a question mark followed by a period, or a comma and a semicolon, you can change it to the correct punctuation. In this case, two hyphens equals one dash, and that's correct. The correct action to take is to teach Spellcheck that this is correct, and essentially tell Spellcheck to never stop on two hyphens again in any job in the future. I'll do this by adding the two hyphens to the personal word list. There are two spaces after this comma. Spellcheck is suggesting that I delete one of those spaces. Sounds good to me. I'll click Change to accept Spellcheck's suggestion. Apparently, Ms. Patterson paused in between these two sentences, and I re-identified her during that pause. There are several options to choose from to modify this. If the second occurrence should have been a different speaker, I could select another paragraph type or speaker ID from the list of suggestions and then click Change. But this is clearly just a duplicate, so I can remove the extra unnecessary occurrence of colloquy Ms. Patterson colon space by clicking Delete. This prompt gives me the option to continue spell checking from the beginning of the transcript. If I start spell check anywhere except the beginning of the job, that's probably a good idea so I can make sure that I didn't miss anything. However, for the purposes of this lesson, you now know the basic features of spell check, so we'll click no. There are many more options available for spell check, and you can customize spell check to skip or locate specific items according to your preferences. You can learn more about all of the spell check options and settings in Case Catalyst Help and the Case Catalyst Manual. You can go ahead and practice using all of these features in the training user. Open the Edit Practice file and follow the instructions for Exercise 15. When you're ready, proceed to the next lesson in order.